the Abscondo Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. With world events, I noticed that people are really going through their own unique processes as to how to cope with these changes. And it might be something like, you know, the five stages of grief, but I don't think it's that simple. I think we all have our own uh, process and it goes back and forth among different stages. And, and of course, it involves real ideas about real things and doubts about and, and concerns and, and, and fears about money and, and, of course, health and so forth. And, you know, it occurred to me that, that it is a process. And the pro- what it is is a process of, of letting go of illusion. And some of us, even before all this happened, were already going down that path. We recognized the, the reality, the, 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 you know, the old normal of our lives wasn't really something that we actually even liked that much. <laughs> and we were trying to find a different way. And it, that was a process. For me, that's, that began, well, I don't know. I, I talk about this every, you know, in every podcast and everything I write. I talk about this process of sort of finding your own way and undoing uh, the world's normal, the conditioning from the world. And so I was already, you know, far, far, far down this path, already fully adjusted and living in the way that now everyone else is being forced to live, you know, at home with the kids, um, with some kind of uncertainty about the future economically, not able to go out and do things. You know what I'm talking about. You're living in the same reality that I am, no matter where you are in the world. And so I, I found myself in a position where, I, you know, I need to share some things about this, this process to help people adjust to the new reality. I don't know if this is kind of how long this will last. I don't know if we'll ever go back to the old normal. I don't know if anyone even wants to. And that's the interesting thing, because it feels a little bit to me like, you know, there were other ways to deal with this. This wasn't the only option. Um, you know, I'm not saying that there's not there, that it's not a very serious, deadly virus. And obviously it is. But there are different ways to handle it. And I'm not going to go through that because I'm not, I don't have control over how the world responds to things. But I did notice that the reaction does have very little concern for that old normal, for our lives the way they were. And that tells me that we didn't like the old normal that much. We just needed something different. It was time for a change. And to me, that is the most wonderful thing. I think it's the most exciting time I've ever been alive even though I also have, you know, some degree of fear that I deal with about the future economically and, and, and so forth. You know, I don't like that the borders have been closed. I don't like that the governments have so much power. It's scary to me. It's a little bit like communism or fascism. And at first I tried to think of it, I, th- I was thinking of, along those lines, you know, people wearing face masks and not free to, 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 well, they're not free in a sense in the external world. And it's scary to me. I'm, I'm you know, that's what I talk about all the time is, is personal freedom. Um, I did get to a point in my process to accept the reality that this is the way the world has responded. And at the end of the day, we are still free because freedom comes from within. We are still free to feel good, to be with people who we love. Unfortunately, those who are stranded somewhere in a different country and they can't get home, that's a terrible situation. But the vast majority of, of us can still be near the people who we love. You know, we can still be free to give and receive love and we can express ourselves. Um, and that, you know, to me, that's, that's what freedom is. That's what, we, that's what we actually want. I think before this happened, we were so consumed with trying to hold on to the illusion. You know, we didn't want to look deep, deeply into anything. Into, into, uh, we, we don't want to understand how, how the systems of the world actually work, you know, where our food comes from, uh, um, how our cities operate, the grocery stores and, 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 and the sewage and the whatever it may be, we have to start thinking about like, oh, we depend upon all these things. And that's kind of a weird way of looking at things when we're, you know, we're on Instagram and we're seeing uh, just the, these beautiful images of people just at some destination. We don't think about, you know, the, the, the airlines getting us there and, and, all, and all that goes into this and so forth. And now we're forced to look at the totality of life in this dimension. And not be so distracted by the image or our our own personal image, you know, um, projecting that, that perfect story, um, that career, 
those plans, the, those trips and all these things, all this consumerism, you know, the sports. And it was such a nice distraction that it became so normal and people didn't do the work to really look at their relationships, look at their their emotions and their feelings, their inner state of being. And now everyone is forced, or will be soon, if not already, forced into the situation where you might need to sit quietly in a room and don't know what to watch or do uh, for a very long time. And that's that's how the ego breaks. You know, that's where we have to take that journey where you have to look yourself in the mirror as it, as it were you know how does your relationship work how do you feel next to that one person uh, if you have a relationship how do you feel together all the time are you able to be yourself and talk freely and do what you want to do how does it feel to be with your kids how does it feel um you know to have all this time that, that you have to fill every day how does it feel to know that, that your quality of life may not be sustainable? Um, the, the uncertainty, the change, you know, these are profound things that people have to be going through. There is no going back. The, this is a journey that changes you forever because, because what you're doing is you're, you're undoing illusion. If something wasn't illusion or fictitious, it would still be. So everything that we are now lacking, um, you know, the, the job uncertainty and all these things, um, that was, it was kind of illusory. And the way the world works and, and everything, the institutions, it's all kind of an illusion in a sense, you know, or a lot of it is. And so there's all this conditioning that, you know, school is absolutely necessary and we absolutely have to go to the office and, um, you know, can't work from home, God forbid, and all these things. And I was just told that that's how it has to be, and we just accepted everything. You know, entertainment has to be going to an expensive basketball, you know, NBA game. It has to be going to an expensive concert, to a festival. And these things are just gone for a while. The whole economy might come crashing down. I mean, there's so, many, so much bankruptcy is going to happen that this, we're not going back to how it was. And, you know, how does that make you feel? It really puts pressure on you to learn to be happy by yourself or learn to be happy with your family, with your partner, with people you care about and love. So now we find ourselves asking some really basic and yet profound questions. Basic question meaning, like, am I, am I happy with my life without all these distractions? Who am I? without this external image or these possessions? What do I want in life? What do I need in my relationship? Who should I be with? You know, we're looking at ourselves in the mirror so just day in and day out in a, in a way that hasn't been done before. And this is going to be a profound transformation it is, it is a profound transformation in the world. There's no going back because when you do this, you know, yes, you'll go to the corporate events again. You'll go to the mall again someday, but you've changed. So you'll enjoy it in a way, but you've changed deep down. And, you know, one of the things that happens during these, these types of crises is that, is that, you know, the content out there from before the crisis, like when, you know, when 9-11 happened, I always was looking at like, well, was this before 9-11 when this movie came out and this book came out or was it after? Because for a little while, it felt like there was a different reality uh, in the U.S. government, at least in the U.S. that was the case, of course. And the U.S. government made things really different for American citizens for a couple of years, the, the media and the basic structure of things. And so you, you kind of had a sense that the stuff from before wasn't all that, that relevant anymore. And I just wanted to say that the stuff that, that I've been putting out, uh, these podcasts, you know, for the past few, for a uh, year or two, and my writing for the past three or four years, I mean, everything I've been doing really ever <laughs> has been about this. So I don't feel that anything I've been saying or writing about has become irrelevant. In fact, I think just the opposite. 
I woke up one day and I realized that I've been living in, 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 in such a way that now people have to be forced into that same lifestyle I have. So I thought, well, why not share? You know, I'm glad that I've been sharing all this information about how to make this, these adjustments to your life. And I can tell you that, that you're not going to miss how life was before. Because I was living in a way that, you know, I had access to all that stuff. I walked away from it, and I've been much happier in a life that is still completely accessible to you now. And I've written books, you know, free books, free ebooks about it. You can download, just, you know, go to abscondo.com and you can get the links there. Um, and really to, to dive into this idea of, un, of living in total honesty and in perfect love and peeling away everything else that isn't that. Because that's what's happening in the world. We are peeling away all the BS. This is some kind of death of ego. I'm not going to say that ego is going to die completely. I hope it does, but it won't. Um, but ego is being attacked by itself. Because even illness itself is of the ego. I've said this before. I said, I said it last week that if you were in a perfect state of health and inner, inner peace, you would not have a chance of getting such a virus. Period. And institutions of the world are, are egoic. They are there to, um, you know, to, to convince us that we are, we are somehow subject to them, that they have authority over us, to control us, to to establish fear um, and all these things, you know, it's what all this dying is, is ego is the ego. Egos come in the form of, of human beings that come in the form of groups, corporations, institutions, and it's imploding. So what we're going to be left with is a situation and what we are seeing already is that people are becoming more honest and open. People are, talking about far more meaningful things. If you look at Instagram and Facebook, for example, you see a lot of really meaningful posts. You know, there are a lot of spiritual leaders out there that are emerging to help people make sense out of this and go through the, through the transition. And eventually, you know, I don't know where you are in this transition. Maybe you don't realize this is happening yet, and that's fine. You know, I've, I've had to learn to accept people's process. I happen to have gone down this same process a long time ago. That doesn't make me any best, better or worse than you. It just makes me, it's just what I did. And for whatever reason, that's not what you did. Or, or maybe you did. Maybe you're further along than me down this process, and I'd love to, to hear from you. You know, when I put out this stuff, well, everything I'm doing is, I'd rather not have to do this. I'd rather just be able to be rich and, and, and go to the beach and, and read some books or whatever. But I mean, I say that, but I really don't mean that. Of course, I, of course, be creating stuff and 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 you know, trying to serve people is the most important thing we can do that makes us happier than anything else. But my point is, I'm just trying to help. And and one of the things that I that I did, I'm going to talk a lot more about this in the coming. Well, indefinitely, I hope. Um, it's too soon, I think, f to to get too worked up over this because people are still just starting this process of, of, of change. But at some point, we are going to need new technologies and tools to help us live in this new world order. I'm not saying that everything's going to change. Of course, the government's going to give, you know, going to give benefits and you're going to have a job at some point and things like this. But I think we have to, as we, as we change and look at our lives, we are going to want to do more uh, with people. We're going to want more meaningful interaction with other people. And we're not going to want to depend entirely upon um, businesses and institutions for our for our well being, and I sort of envisioned a situation like this. Well, I've always thought of a situation like this in the world, and I built a mobile app. It's called I Am by InfoBeing. You can find out about it by going to abscondo.com, or you can just download it from your from your phone and from the App Store and, and Google Play. And the idea behind this app is that people are able to do two things. You're able to stay in need. So let's say, let's say you're stranded out there, uh, have nowhere to sleep tonight because the hotels are closing. You can say, I need somewhere to sleep. And someone else can come along and says, you know, I'm hosting somebody in my, in my home. And, and you can agree uh, to do that without having, you know, without having any institutions in the way. It's, a, it's free communication between people. You know, Facebook isn't enough. We're all posting everything, but nobody's seeing all these posts. And there's just too much going out there for anyone to, to receive the messages. And Instagram's the same thing. Those existing social media platforms, those were designed for a world in which we had jobs. It was centralized institutions were running our lives. And we just wanted to you know, project an image about ourselves out there onto the world. They're not really meant for doing anything useful. 
And this mobile app is intended to do stuff. Do whatever you want. Do what, Get what you need. Serve people how you can. And there's also an element of of freedom because there's a there's a currency, a cryptocurrency built into it that you can actually trade. It's called IAM, I-A-M. And you can buy and sell stuff on the app. You don't have to use dollars or euros or whatever. You can use IAM in case where, you know, your money's running low. You know, we can choose, we can choose to make this a real thing. We can choose to adopt this type of technology. It's already out there. It's not perfect. There's right now, for example, there's a problem with the messaging and I, don't, I spent so much money on this thing, and I didn't want to keep dumping more money into it, and it was working perfectly. And then recently, the the, I, the iPhone messaging crash. I have to get that rewritten. And but you know what I realized? You don't even need to use the messaging. You can, as your username, just put your email address. Okay, so when you sign up as your username, or you can change it later on your profile, change it to your email address. Create statements saying what you want and what you need. You know, look through the other people's statements of what they want and what they need, and you can have people, you know, people are going to email you, you can email them, and you can hook up and you can do those things and, and meet people based on compatible needs. Now, I know probably right now people are, you're probably out there scared of other people because they have germs and everything, but at some point that's going to end. And also you can meet people and not meet up. I mean, you can just meet people to talk about something or, or to live out your fantasies or whatever you, you want to do with this, with this app. Of course, we need lots and lots of users. And right now we don't have lots and lots of users because there was no need in the old world order. People, were, you know, people weren't really interested in going in a different direction. They were just trying to hold on to, hold on to everything as it was. We spent so much of our energy trying to hold on to everything as it was. It was, you know, and that's why... We weren't free to explore um, who we are, what we actually want. Do we have to do relationships and marriages the same way that everyone else does? Can we invent? Can we be ourselves? Can we be honest? Can we accept other people? Can we love people? Can we find inner peace and just be happy sitting on a park bench looking at the tree? Now we have time for this. A lot of us do. And I also want to say, if you're a business person like I am, I'm not sitting around looking at the, looking at the trees any more than I ever did before. I have work to do. I I run uh, campaigns for companies to find new customers. Well, you know, there, a lot of these companies have very relevant, uh, you know, urgent pro- solutions that are useful right now. So we're continuing business. It's been bumpy, and I worry about it. But you know, if you have something you can offer that is essential. <laughs> then you're in good shape. If you're selling something or doing something that's totally non-essential, total fluff, in this economy, you might as well forget about it. So that's another area of life to look at. You know, what are you really, what kind of value are you actually creating out there for, for other people? Because if it's, tr- if it's real, if it's essential, if it's worth something, it would still be relevant now and indefinitely. Lots and lots of shifts have to go on. We've not been living in a way that's been very real. This little virus shouldn't have done this. We chose for this to happen because we didn't, we didn't like how things were before. I'm convinced. And if this one isn't the big one, which it seems like it is, but you know maybe they have a vaccine or maybe they have some kind of a treatment tomorrow and, they, and we just go back to normal, it'll be the next one because, because the whole system is unsustainable. We're polluting to the point that's unsustainable. Resources running out, you know, the way we travel, health issues, um, the egos, ego in this world is unsustainable. And I think we're ready for a real shift, but I'm telling you guys, I know it's not easy. I know you go through a lot of crap. I know that every day you have ups and downs right now. I know, because I do. But I, I do want you to know that, that it's a very good idea to... Do a lot of reading, a lot of talking with people who you love, a lot of writing. If you're an artist, if you're a musician, you know, try to create something, at least practice your your skill. Go into who you are during this time, but also be open. So, you know, read all the books. You can start with my book. Start with abscondo.com. Read my books because, hey, you're listening to me, right? So maybe you will read my book. (laughs) It's free. Everything I do is free to you. Um, use the app 
but that's not the whole thing. Is it's about changing our thinking first, you know, and then we can, and then we find people on the app and we do things together and we and we, we create a people economy. We create a different world order, not just dependent upon the government and the corporations for for support. You want to feel deep down that you can you're okay by yourself in a room. You you love who you're with. Everything is wonderful, and you have the ability to take care of your family and yourself. You can earn a living. And, and this kind of stuff is going to just tr- strengthen your life. Yes, you can get a corporate job if, that, if that's what you want, but there's also this channel out there that we can begin a people economy where people do things for each other. You don't have to always go buy stuff at a store. You can, you know, people can, can sell you something. You can serve other people and do something for them and make money that way. You can use that money or those IM points to buy favors from someone else. And who knows? This, this, you know, the idea is this is a cryptocurrency. This can, you know, this we're talking about human potential. We're talking about like everything people want to do and need, they can do if they have the right technology. What if we unleashed human potential? And what if that currency became far more valuable than any, than Bitcoin or anything else? You know, an, an actual economy, not just a a scheme, a financial scheme. You know. Oh, and by the way, you can read, if you don't want to just use the app, but you want to understand what I'm thinking about it and, and the potential, read my book called The Switch. Chapter 10 um, is all about, in detail, why this app, what it does, what's the potential of it if we choose. And anybody out there who wants to actually help get the word out, who believes in this vision, after reading that book, after looking at the app, after listening to, to the, some of the, my content and so forth, um, you know, I will definitely reward you get in touch with me if, if you if you can somehow do something to to get the message out because you're going to need people in your community um to be plugged into this you know this app and, and this way of thinking um you know i want to work with anybody and support you ultimately it's your decision i mean I've, I've done my part i'm doing my part i can't do everything i can't spend my own money any more than i have already we need to come together if we want something different we have to go get it and maybe it's not time yet sit with yourself look within Read some Eckhart Tolle, maybe A Course in Miracles, maybe the Tao Te Ching, maybe Don Miguel Ruiz. Fall in love. Be you. And when you're ready to extend that love and, and, and extend yourself to others, now we're really talking about some change. We're not there yet. We'll get there. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to do a lot more of these podcasts, uh, maybe every day. I don't know, maybe every couple of days because it feels like it's kind of an important time. But as I said, everything else out there, I put out there the music and the and and the the, the blog posts every day, the books, the other podcasts. It's all completely relevant. Nothing. I wouldn't change a single word. So enjoy. I'll leave you with a pretty relevant song to drive that point home. It's called Dreamscape, and it's about the collapse of things as they were. Thank you for this very different podcast today, and uh, and uh, please feel free to get in touch. I love you guys. We build up walls, pretend to stand tall. Swallow thoughts like corporate food Expensive pills to kill our moods To kill what comes from you Dreamscape, dreamscape Everybody's talking like they're doing great It's all gonna break We're all gonna wake from these lies With really not much to say And without much shame We'll watch the world go a different way A different colors blind our sight I guess the communists didn't think the same as you such a system, yeah, the system told them what to do And they had no clue And then one brilliant May, the system fades away 
And everything that they had known gets stuck in yesterday When the lies all fade They got nothing to say Tear down the wall Street coke feel death more And we'll turn off our TVs too We'll fuck all night and sleep till noon Yeah, that's just what we'll do Dreams can, dreams can Everybody's talking like they're doing great It's all gonna break We're all gonna wake from these lies With really not much to say But if you find a way To know yourself and the words you say A life of art is the art of life You know I once was plugged into the system too I guess my thoughts and dreams were mine just like a new hairdo Or a branded shoe And when brilliant may I finally flew away To let my present overcome my fears Well anyway Now I live my days 